Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, thanks, thanks for your likes and subscribes on uh, the last video, and um, yeah, just thanks for your support. It's been fantastic. Uh, today I'm going to set up the uh, shredder to, uh, to clear up the mess you see behind me. Um, yeah, uh, that's part of what we're doing today anyway. So there we go guys, pile gone and a whole bag full of lovely mulch. Uh, just want to say, just point out something, when you're dealing with uh, citrus, sometimes it can bite back. And these Oh, sharp. So what I'm going to do is sink these into the ground a bit and this is going to be our permanent fruit orchard yeah because um, it's going to get a bit of shade from this orange tree next to it etc and I'll make something so we can put some shade over it but we're growing obviously black currants and blueberries so so part of the process of uh, moving our black currants etc down to the lower garden bed now tip all these over so they're easy to get out and we've got um, lots of helpers strangely enough I 
Okay guys, simple raised beds. This is uh, a sheet of galvanized steel, uh, wrinkly tin, knuckly uh, chapas, whatever you want to call it. It's just, just you know, galvanized um, galvanized steel. So basically, I'll, de I'll deconstruct one I've made. Basically, so it's just it's just rolled up and, and screwed together with these uh, tech screws, yeah, which are little screws with um, with a drill bit end on them, yeah. Uh, they just drill themselves through the steel and then the the thread grips the steel and they it just pulls tight. Simple. You can make them any size you like. Uh, little ones like these over there. Or bigger ones, which I'm just about to make. So I think I'll start with that one. I'll do another one. I'm trying to keep the washers with them. So these are just old sheets that we had on the farm, you know. Um, until I get around to making them. Posh concrete one, uh, these will have to do. So I'll just fix that to there. You can reuse these as well, which is great. Uh, I do need to be the other way around. They just, yeah, the little drill bit screws through. There, it needs to stand up. Obviously, the circle's a better shape. And there you have a bigger race bed. If you want to go bigger again, put another section in. Simple.
just a quick one for you. We're down in the woods today again, cutting up more mimosa for firewood, chucking it in our tractor and the homemade wrap on the front. And uh, and then we've got to rush and not rush, to take Andrea to the hospital this afternoon for another MRI scan. So things are looking good. So some of you have been asking. <laughs> Oh, please. So, some of you have been asking how the turkey is doing, mummy turkey. Well, she's over there having a dust bath at the minute. Please, I'm trying to talk. Uh, and Elvis is getting involved. So I'm going to top up the water and just go and check on her eggs. I'm just checking she's got 13 eggs. So I think the other one might have laid in here as well. One, two, three, four, five. 13. So she did have 12, so an extra one's appeared. Um, just check her water. Give her fresh water. Also got to keep an eye on Elvis because he is prone to attack from behind. And she's got plenty of food in here as well. There we go. Right Elvis, calm down. So all good, nice shiny, warm eggs. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh yeah. Good boy. Go on. Go on. Go on. Something else to show you. So the other turkey's laid four eggs so far. So it's looking like she's uh, she's going to start a brood as well, which is awesome. Only thing we're slightly concerned about is turkey poults are notoriously uh, well, notoriously difficult to get through the first couple of weeks so we're thinking about brooders and things hi everyone i've just come back from doing a bee inspection uh it's very windy today and they're not happy girls <laughs> um we've had vast improvement uh so it looks like next inspection a couple of weeks time we'll be adding two more hives and do two splits because uh two of the hives now one has eight frames in and the other one's got nine frames, that's out of ten frames in the bottom, so I think they're quite manic because they're, they're, they're just full and nowhere to go. So we're going to have to do a split, probably in a week's time. Uh, I'll take, yeah, I'll, I'll film that for you guys, so I just can see what we're doing. But basically we'll take three or four frames from the really busy hives uh, and just put them on their own without a queen. So the queen with the rest of the hive think they split and she's happy and uh, the other ones realize they haven't got a queen and they'll make one um yeah and that's how it works whether it's a bit early in the season i don't know i'll ask some experts and uh, we'll see what happens but good news they've they're really really busy and uh, yeah there are loads of them loads of them okay everyone uh, right something a little bit different now uh we're gonna make a gate we've got some leftover shelving units from uh our friend dave in val de Brazeres. And uh, we're going to turn them into gates because uh, um, obviously we put all the gate posts in now, so we need to make the gates to keep the chickens in. And then we can extend their area to another uh, 100 square meters or something. But let's go for it. There's the basic materials three gates I'm making out of these. Uh, just got to shorten this a bit and weld this piece here on the end. So I'll be cutting this into like a, a, a a V shape to, to fit this into and then weld it here. Uh, making them 1.2 high so I need to weld another piece on this end here. Um, yeah then put some netting on it and away we go.
So as you can see now, we've um, basically cleaned all the joints up. Something like it. Bit of a gap, but we can fill that. And then clamped it together. And that'll give us a long end to the gate. Uh, earth clamp on that end. So now just weld it up. Not bad for a beginner.
again, not a bad weld for a beginner. Not the best, but it's functional. Okay everyone, there's the first gate out of uh, three to do, many more to come, I've no doubt. <coughs> the reason we, um, I've kinked these top wires, yeah, for some reason uh, it stops the chickens trying to get up. Uh, whether they think it's a more of a solid um, mass, I don't know. And the reason we have just wire on the top and not, and not uh, a solid piece to the top of the gate, same reason, they don't like to jump on top of wire, but they'll jump on top of a solid thing. Uh, and then I know people are going to say, oh, you should clip their wings, etc. But um, we find it, when you clip their wings when they're really young, um, but now they've got an area, they know what they're doing. And uh, we find if the, uh, the, the main predator we have here, so as I was saying, the main predator we have here is mongoose. Uh, we've lost quite a few chickens to mongoose. And uh, we find now where the him with um, they've got trees and somewhere so if the mongoose did get in there perchance uh, they got somewhere to fly up into out of harm's way so that's our theory anyway we've not lost any well we've not had any mongoose touch wood uh, we've not had any mongoose since our big attack but um, yeah we think if they can fly a little bit it might help them you know so that's why we've done the gates this way with the wire on top they don't tend to jump on it so that's all good. So I've just got to complete the two other gates. In the meantime, let's go and see what Angie's doing. And here she is. So what are you up to, Angie? Well, this is the last of my sauerkraut at the moment with our red cabbage. I make it with red cabbage. This has actually got red onions in it and our garlic. Um, but sadly, I've had to actually physically buy the cabbage. <clears throat> I'm going to make some more. So here goes. So what's the ingredients? Um, Obviously red cabbage, onions, I often use red onions but I've just got normal onions today, garlic and I chuck in some, ooh, let's see, cumin seeds, chilli flakes, mustard seeds and some pepper. Well there you go. So first of all we have to chop up the cabbage. Alright, red cabbage all chopped up, get in my bowl. What I also put with this is uh, I use Himalayan pink salt for the brine and um, we're very lucky just outside the village we have a natural spring and I use that spring water as opposed to tap water. Okay, onions chopped, they go in and I put in whole cloves of garlic because they're not very big cloves so we will just go in and have a, a nice mix around. Right, last thing I do is just get some, I use Him Himalayan pink salt just because it's supposedly got more minerals and stuff in it. I'm really bad at measuring out any quantities. I've been doing this for so long I just chuck it all in and it seems to work. So that's uh, sea salt or, Himala or Himalayan rock salt, yeah? Yeah, that's the... Not table salt? No. Okay. No, um, sea salt's fine. It's just I grind it all up, tip it on there, cover it. I've got a, a little mesh food dome. So it'll sit there and do its thing for a bit. I then... For how long? Just, I normally leave it in there for overnight. Okay. And then it goes into a... Kilner Like this one? Yeah. <laughs> Although it says Le Parfait or something on this. So, uh, sorry, let me just get the. Right, so just give this a, a gentle mix up. So, all the salt, the chili flakes I've put in, a little bit of cumin seeds, and some. 
mustard seeds just to give it a little bit of zest so that it gets a little mixed up like so and then I like I said leave it overnight and when I come to then put it into the jar I'll mix up a little bit of um, spring water just to top up the briny levels so and that's it Okay, gate's done, wire's put on, additional chicken wire because the gaps in these, the chickens just walk right through it. So we've had to put chicken wire along all the fencing, all around the chickens. Uh, because yeah, this is stock fencing, uh, this stuff, and this is chicken wire. So chicken wire is not strong enough to hold out dogs, uh, you know, things like that. Also, we, we put stock fencing because we in the future we can put pigs, goats, anything in each paddock so we'd like them all stock fence properly but with additional chicken wire where we're going to put the chickens. So I've got just a couple of these yeah, and a couple of these. These are drilled into here and obviously these sit like so. Yeah, if ever you want to make a load of money Come to Portugal and bring loads of these because these were nearly eight euros each and these were about the same. It's just ridiculous. No, actually these were more, weren't they? No, eight fifty, eight sixty. I mean in the UK these would be a couple of quid each. So just saying. And then there are many other benefits to being here. Hang on a minute, look. <laughs> yeah. Going for that, it's going to go in there. These, uh, this is the old eucalyptus poles from our friend Andreas, his, uh, his place, so they're going to be proper tough. Again, using the trusty old tech screws, the ones with the drill bit on the end. Uh, centre of the hole. Oh yeah. I'm going to just lift the end of that. We've got a small gap here, a large one there. Lift that gate up a bit on that end. And we should be something like Say about there, haven't you?
slow. I think, you think I need to come up a little bit more? Yeah. It's just a... Uh, I know they, they don't meet in the same place uh, only because basically this is a natural post so it's a bit like that, it's not dead straight so it should be good. Into the post do you think? Okay so we've got a little bolt latch uh, to fit on the gate, not a problem. But we do have a problem. Uh, this is supposed to sit on a square post, obviously, yeah. And um, if we put that on the there, so it's square there, and it shuts. This doesn't even meet the gate, yeah. So we're going to put that on the gate and drill a hole in the post for this to go in the night or into the post, yeah. But again, we use these tech screws because we love them. Not the only reason, but. Good reason. All I've got to do is drill a hole in the gate. I'll go and get a drill for that. So I've got a drill bit. Uh, I'm going to call it something there. What should we say? There. 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 So this is obviously just a little tiny drill for what I use for ceilings and stuff from Hilti. I'm not sponsored by Hilti but I would love to be. They're the greatest tools ever. Uh, <laughs> I've got to get a bigger drill. It won't fit. This is only a 10mm uh, chuck 
so I need to get a bigger chuck to take the bigger drill and this will go I could do it by hand but it'll take forever right I'm gonna get the drill Okay, if this becomes a problem guys and this uh, the post shrinks, whatever, something moves. Uh, one of the easiest solutions for this is to drill a bigger hole and put a pipe in there. And the pipe can stick out a little bit. Yeah, so if you can imagine there's a piece of pipe sticking in this hole. Uh, the pipe can stick out to, you know, right out to here. Yeah, simple. We like simple. Just uh, some of that to say, it's not a Hilti advert, they don't sponsor me, they give me no money. Uh, this drill I bought in, proof in here. 2011. Yeah, 2011, and on the back two, 2011, January 2011. Uh, still like new, you, you know, it's still, I mean, it doesn't look new, but it operates like new. Uh, just love them to bits. Okay, everyone, uh, that's it for this Friday. Uh, thanks for watching and um, hope you enjoyed it. Bit of all sorts, really, in this one. Uh, next week, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Got a couple of jobs to do for some wonderful people. Uh, might film a bit of that and, yeah, all sorts of other stuff going on here. Anyway, see you on Tuesday. Bye. Bye.